Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Alert, alert! The recently released Siege of Paris DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla contains several hidden coded messages that involve ciphers, the Latin language and even the Isu language. The last few days have been a roller coaster for some of the fans over at the Assassin's Creed subreddit who have found different clues and ways to proceed in the various steps of this new and currently unsolved mystery surrounding Assassin's Creed Valhalla and while we followed all of that we also did some work of our own to add our own spin and some new elements like a picture containing never before seen Isu language to the current work on this mystery. Lastly, if all of that isn't interesting enough for you, then let's just say that this mostly takes place in Saint-Denis, the setting of the Dead King's DLC of Assassin's Creed Unity, and it will allow you to at least partially visit the crypts under the town, literally walk around Dead Kings, and even see some First Civilization structures, and like we said, language. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel, turning the notifications on, doing a rain dance, lighting a candle in your favorite church, anything that can help us and the community crack this mystery, really. And with that out of the way, let's dive in all the details of the Saint Denis mystery from the Siege of Paris DLC. Alright, let's start at the beginning. We're going to try and reconstruct all the events and finds by the various members of the community up until the recording of this video, while also linking them in the description. Of course, if you feel like we missed any major contribution, feel free to let us know in the comments and we are going to add it in the description. So, around a day ago, Redditor Palpitation Top 611 opened a thread on the Assassin's Creed subreddit mentioning a strange and unintelligible message found in a document in Siege of Paris. As we found the document too during our early access to the DLC, we can actually show you where it can be found. It is located in the bell tower of the main church in Saint Denis, which as we mentioned was the setting for the Dead King's DLC of Assassin's Creed Unity, where Arnold Dorian actually explored the city and fought a group of raiders sacking the tombs of the French kings, and eventually located a precursor temple located underneath the city, where he found a head-shaped lantern containing a spherical piece of Eden in the shape of a tiny apple. Now, the town of Saint Denis also makes an appearance in Siege of Paris, which takes place roughly 900 years prior to Dead Kings, and indeed it has a big church with some kind of access to a crypt which is actually closed and with no locks. If you explore the church from within, and especially its bell tower, you're going to eventually reach its top, and along with the treasure in there, you're also going to find a strange stone tablet. As we said, the text looks like gibberish, but at the end it has a line that is actually in Latin, octavus, which actually means eighth, as in the adjective between seventh and ninth. After some time, this first part of the mystery was actually cracked by Lacrosse Daemon, one of the hard-working peeps at the Assassin's Creed Wiki who realized that the message on the tablet was actually coded with a Caesar cipher, that is a cipher where you shift the entire alphabet backwards for a predetermined number of characters. For example, if that number was 5, the letter A would be V, B would be W, C would be X, and so on. In this case, the number of characters was 18, with the added difficulty that we had to use the Latin alphabet, so removing the characters J, U and W. So replacing the coded letters with their counterparts actually revealed, drum rolls, a messaging Latin. It says, the Floribus Ceruleis in Compendio, the Floribus Albis ad Septentrionem Lutetiae ubi oramus, ac foros suessionum ubi venduntur, passus equi ad locum ducunt, abde eum, proclavi proxima primus secundus ultimusque proximum continent, et tertius solum manet, octavus. Now, there have been some translations of this Latin message floating around, like the one by the subreddit mode Assassinus, but we decided to try our own, which actually differs here and there from most of the translations, at least the ones that we saw on the subreddit. So here goes. From the light blue flowers in Compendium, 
from the white flowers in northern Paris where we pray, and from the square or plaza of Suessionum where things are sold, that is, in the market square of Suessionum. From all those places, the equal lengths lead to the place. Hide it, and we'd add hide it there. For the next key, the first, the second, and the last one contain the next one, and the third remains alone. So the first part of the message actually mentions three locations, Compendium, Northern Paris, and Suessionum, which can actually be found in a DLC's map, but the message is more precise than that. It actually tells us to find some light blue flowers in Compendium, some white flowers in Northern Paris in a location where people pray, and a market square in Suessionum. And that's what we set out to do. So we went to Compendium and we found some areas containing light blue flowers in front of the church. And just in case we put a map marker there. Then we traveled to Paris and we had to look for a bit because while we looked for the flowers on the ground in front of a church, they are actually located on the walls of the church of Saint Marie. So just in case, we put a marker on there too. Do you see where this is going? Then we traveled to Suessionum, and this time we had to look for a market square. And this is basically the center of Suessionum itself, not too difficult to find. And you know the drill, just in case, we put a map marker there too. At this point, you should have guessed, we didn't really do that just in case. In fact, the message says, the equal lengths lead to the place, meaning that from these three locations, we might be able to find the place that is our next destination in our puzzle. So we consider the three locations as the vertexes of a triangle, kind of like in the Magister Vitus mystery, if you will, and then we drew the medians coming from all three vertexes, the equal lengths that the message was hinting at, and these medians cross at the very specific single place west of Saint Denis. So we travel there, and exactly in that spot, amidst a tiny forest, hidden within the grass, we could find the covered entrance that allowed us to go underground. The stairs led us to the entrance of a crypt, and following it even more underground, we could reach another room where we could find several burial sites for people that seemed to have a kingly appearance. Thus, we actually had reached the burial sites of the various kings of France that historically were indeed buried under the Basilica of Saint Denis. And at the same time, we realized that we were literally walking inside a reference to Unity's DLC, Dead Kings. Moving on, another passage led to another room where we had to jump even further down and this led us in front of a closed gate, but on the left side, there was another passage with another tablet. And we have to stop for a moment here, because at the same time, and please correct us if we're wrong here, Palpitation Top, the Redditor who had found the first tablet while roaming around Saint Denis, by chance actually found the entrance to the crypt, and thus this second tablet, and was super fast to report this on the subreddit. Now, this message too looked to be unintelligible, but again, as with the first tablet, it seemed to have some kind of hint in Latin at its end. Secundus post tertium tum quartus post quintum, which means the second after the third, then the fourth after the fifth. This message has actually been decoded since, but before that happened, another redditor called GigZ2G actually found something more about this. Next to the second ancient tablet, there is a crack on the wall through which some first civilization structures can be seen, so it seems like we are very close to the first civilization vault that Arno found in Dead Kings, but there is more. Turning on Eagle Vision will actually allow Eivor and the players to see through some new Isu language text that actually works like a hologram, meaning it disappears once Eagle Vision is turned off. So of course we couldn't wait to sink our teeth into this, and this is what we found, at least for now. The text is made up of words but also numbers, as the small dots, as you might remember from our Isu language videos, always introduce a number. So for what concerns the words, we have two verbs that end with this desinence, which indicates a verb in the third person plural for both of them. The first one, which should be pronounced hundi, has the root of a word that we have already found, that is sight, so here we can translate it as they see. 
We have already encountered the verb to see, which was spelt differently, but we think this might still be a synonym for it, having the very same root of sight, and as such we will interpret it as to see, even if it might have a slightly different meaning. The other verb, which should be pronounced sakwundi, has the same root of effective, a word that we found in the Kobristan file, but here it's a verb in the third person plural, so it should be they perform, or they complete, or they do. Then we have this word, oenos which we found in several files, but in this very form we found it in the Stonehenge files and should indicate a single and specific object, so one or it as a meaning of a specific thing or action. And lastly we have this word, pronounced hopefully as toe, which means they, as we saw in the Canterbury file. So this should mean they see one or they see it, as in they see something specific, they perform, or they act, or they do. So our feeling, and it might be incorrect of course, is that the sentence is telling us if they, whoever they might be, if they see something specific, they will act, something will happen. Even if our translation is correct though, we don't know what this specific thing might be, or what might happen if they act. Below the words we also have four numbers, introduced by the small dot, and you might remember the ISO numbers have to be translated in the hexadecimal system before being converted to the decimal one. We'll spare you from the process this time, so the numbers we have in front of us are 782, 3962, 37, 3101, as was also mentioned in the Reddit threads about this mystery by user bull0011. What to do with these numbers? That is also unclear for now, but we feel there's more to it than meets the eye. Maybe they're the key to the next step, but we're actually getting ahead of ourselves, as we still have to translate the second tablet. Now this time the message is not encoded with a Caesar cipher, but with a Visioner cipher. <laughs> This is one of the toughest ciphers out there, which was once used in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood with regards to the International Monetary Fund and the Federal Reserve, and it basically is made up of a ciphered text that cannot be deciphered unless you also know a keyword that will be used to get the original text behind the code. Now in this case, Reddit user Kalofonar actually presented the ciphered message from the second tablet on R codes, asking for help, and he did receive that by another user called Yefim Shifrin, who actually recognized it as a Visioner cipher and was even able to detect the needed keyword, which he identified as NTVY, with the added difficulty that even this cipher had to work with the Latin alphabet, that is not using the letters J, U, and W. Now we tested this and it did work well, just not with the keyword NTVY, but rather with the keyword YNTV. Whatever the case, the deciphered text, which is once again in Latin, reads Dionysius voluntates cum sfera inclinavit sed eum salvare non sufficit. Opus eius continuabo fabulam ex capite eius preciso faciam. Falsum fabricavi et sferam intra posui, delusiones reliquis fecere. Set timeo hoc uti nunc meam mentem invadit, medicit quod non vere audio, aut video, aut cetera. Quod puncta ad sinistrum movere debeo non intelego. Hanc rectuli ubi Dionysius hanc invenit, nimis periculosum est, fabulam utemur ad vulgus colligere. Again, we're going to try our very own translation here, hopefully it's not too far from the correct one. Dionysius bent the wheels, or more aptly, the minds, with a sphere slash orb, but it wasn't enough to save him. I will continue his work so that I can create a story out of his severed head. I created or I imagined something false, and within the orb I placed some deceptions that were to be caused against the others, so they were aimed at others. But I fear that this, however, is now invading my mind, it tells me what I don't truly slash actually hear, see or else, I don't understand which point I have to move to the left. 
I brought this, that is the orb, back where Dionysius found it. It is too dangerous. We will make use of a story to tell everyone, that is, we will tell everyone else a fake story about this. A lot to unpack here, starting by Dionysius being the name of the saint that in France is known as Saint Denis, who lived in Paris, then called Lutetia, in the 3rd century AD, and who was martyred for his faith by decapitation, and that according to the Christian legends, after being beheaded, he walked several miles while preaching a sermon on repentance. The document is telling us that during his life, Dionysius, or Denis, used a spear that allowed him to bend the minds of those around him. Of course this is a reference to an apple of Eden that apparently Dionysius had gotten hold of, but even if he used it for his personal interests, even the apple couldn't save him from his destiny, and eventually he died decapitated. The writer of this document is telling us that he knew what Dionysius did and wanted to continue his work so that he could tell a story about his severed head, if our translation is correct. So he imagined something false and through the apple he caused a number of deceptions against the other around him. While doing this though, the writer of the message realized that the apple was having a bad effect on themselves. It was invading their mind, showing and telling them things that they knew weren't real. Because of this, this writer decided to bring back the apple where Dionysius had found it in the first place, and considering its history we can hypothesize that this might be the apple that is also shown in Dead Kings, and thus that the location where Dionysius found it, where the writer put it back, and where the abbot Suget and then Arnaud Dorian found it, is the first civilization vault located underneath the Basilica of Saint Denis, the same vault that we are close to right now. The writer of the tablet said that they brought it back because it was too dangerous for themselves to use and thus decided to tell everyone a fake story about all of this. In Unity, the apple is actually hidden inside a lantern, called the Head of Saint Denis, and this lantern, coupled with the apple, might have very well been the tool used by Dionysius in his time, so maybe that's where the writer of the tablet might have invented the fake story about Dionysius to make people believe that he had walked with his severed head in his hands, while that wasn't really true. So yeah, at this point we are currently stuck here, with the Isu language and its numbers to make sense of, some additional hints that probably still need to be used, secundus, tertius, etc, and a closed gate in front of us. But is it really over? Nah, not really. In fact, we have also found another new and surprising element out of all places in the recently announced fan kit of the DLC, which features a lot of visual assets for the game. In this case, amidst the screenshots there is one similar to its normal counterpart, but it's called Error, and it has some Animus-like visual effects that are rupturing the screenshot itself, and that's just the first of many out-of-place elements here. In fact, in the lower left, if we zoom and enhance like proper CSI agents, we can actually see that the team hid a chunk of a completely new sentence in the Isu language. And that's not all, because we can actually find the second part of this sentence by zooming in this other area of the picture. So if we put it together, it should be something like this. But again, that wasn't it yet. Zooming at the top of the picture, we can actually see a fractured sentence, and if we align its two elements, we can finally read it as You are looking for what is part of you. I for what I am. How much are you willing to sacrifice? An ominous sentence, without a doubt, that our Seri actually believed to be the translation to the Isu language hidden in the picture, so we mixed the English and the Isu sentences, and indeed we found the proper correspondence. So we start as usual with the verbs, and this one, hasodi, is in the present tense, third singular, so it should be is part of, but the desinence here is not indicating the verb to be, and as such it could mean something like belongs to. The other verb has a desinence we have already found indicating a present tense, second person singular. You are looking. As it happened in the translation for the hidden text in the Ubisoft Forward presentation, we have no indicators for the present continuous tense and as such we could also translate it as you look. The verb though has the root of a word we already know, search, and as such we will translate it as you are searching for. 
Next we have this, which should be pronounced as do, and which we actually found in the Gate to Muspelheim videos and data. This ta is our what, as we found it in the Serengeti file, so we just need this word. The only missing part of the English text is you as in is part of you, but we have never seen a conjugated second person singular pronoun, so we can suppose this is how it could look like. The only doubt we have left about it is that it ends with this character, which usually indicates adverse, but in any case, we have no clues for now to understand which is the correct interpretation of this. Next we have m meaning I, and these other two words. This one is what, as we saw earlier, while this one is the verb to be in the first person singular, so I for what I am. And lastly, we are still missing the third sentence, where we identify the verbs. The first one has the all part, which we already found out is the one tied to the verbs in the infinitive tense. So this is to sacrifice. And thus, this is are you willing, in a curious passive form, as if it were are you subdued to sacrifice? And this word should actually mean of yourself, because it has a genitive case, but also because the sentence construction is similar to that of one of the Stonehenge files, while we have a different what here, as we have seen again on the Muspelheim gate, with the meaning of which things. So at last we can read this as which things or how much of yourself are you subdued to sacrifice? Sounds very Odin-like, don't you think? What if this time it was Odin speaking, not to Loki but to Eivor? What if at some point she'll be looking for him or she'll need him and he'll be saying you're looking for somebody that's already part of you, I for what I am, how much are you willing to sacrifice to obtain my knowledge? Would you like to see something like that? And that was it for this video, what did you think of this new mystery, are you interested in knowing more about this, have you found any new elements, clues or hints that we might have missed, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.